Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Kerbal Space Program Interstellar Quest, episode 22. We have Bill and Bob in, uh, Bill and Jeb, sorry, in orbit in their space shuttle, undocking and getting prepared to uh, descend back to the planet Kerbin after performing an inspection on this space, uh, this uh, structure that they are assembling in space. The shuttle just kind of slides away beautifully like that. Ah. It's always nice to watch, to see the ballet of spacecraft in action. Let's see if we can get it from the inside. You're supposed to double click on these windows, but half the time I can't figure out exactly where. Ah, oh, there we go. Got it. Ah, oh, look at it there. Suspended in space. Ah, oh, it's it moves so gently, so um, gracefully. It belies the fact that it is traveling at over two kilometers per second. It's wonderful, isn't it? Just because everybody's moving really fast, if we move really fast together, everything just looks nice and slow and, you know, relaxed. Okay, so we have to bring ourselves back. Let's uh, shut the doors and... Um, oh, wait! No, 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 wait! We can't shut the doors yet because I have not folded in the cargo thing. Um, that looks really dumb, doesn't it? Uh, can I fold it? Uh, nope, it's not that one. And it's not that one. That's great. Uh, none of those seem to work. Okay, let's open this up. Maybe that's jamming it. Because obviously uh, I closed the doors on it. That does not work either. That is frustrating. Uh, okay, so this thing does not seem to be working. Is it locked? Uh, emergency lock? No. Pushing 9 and 0 does not seem to do anything either. Not that I assigned any, any keys to these, but... Um, yeah, close the doors, that's the really bad idea, let's not close the doors on it, let's just imagine that we have had a mechanical failure, okay, uh, this may be a failure in infernal robotics where, I, I, maybe it's related to docking, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I cannot seem to move this hinge back to its stowed position, therefore, maybe if we switch and switch back, let's try it now. Let me see where it is. Let's switch, let's switch, 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 switch. Nope, nope. Nothing's working. It appears to be jammed. That is not what I want to have happen. Okay. Um, well, what are my options? I, I could try loading and reloading and things like that. Or, oh, hey, it's Jebediah. Well, it's a good thing we brought Jebediah along because Jebediah is the only pilot who could possibly fly a space shuttle back through the atmosphere with the cargo bay's doors open. And yes, that's what we're going to do. Eh, old me seemed to have come up with a bright idea when he claimed that this was some sort of Jebediah story. Totally didn't plan it that way, but hey, we have Jebediah on board and he's clearly the pilot for the job of flying this thing back through the atmosphere. Um, yeah, there's... You know, this takes a really, really long time, of course. We've got a whole orbit. We've got a burn using the RCS to slow things down. So, of course, we're going to skip forward to the actual final descent here. Um, surprisingly, it doesn't appear to matter about the heating. It doesn't really seem to change that. It'd be nice if it did, especially when you consider that having a cargo bay open should probably have some sort of major effect on the aerodynamics. Uh, maybe Mr. Ferrum uh, could uh, tell us exactly what the effect would be. But uh, yeah, we come down, it's more or less a standard approach. This is still on Ferrum Aerospace 0.10. And uh, well, I think we'll find out a little more about that later. That was uh, not even the previous version, but the version before the previous version. Uh, so I don't know if it had any support for, you know, strange aerodynamics if the cargo bay doors open. I try to do one of my turns, but this spacecraft does seem to have some weird issue that if you try to turn, uh, it, it's like it almost loses lift and, and it will want to nose down if I turn too hard. It has a, a habit of just like spinning out of control, but at least uh, it's e easy to get back under control. Yeah, so descent comes down just fine. We come in maybe a little high, but uh, we're, we're losing altitude very quickly, and so we can pretty much go for a, a landing on the front of the runway here. 
And the only thing would be that uh, we need to come over a little. And at this point, we're about 400 meters per second. And the atmosphere really, we get really into the regime where the atmosphere gives us control. So we can kind of turn in front of the runway. And uh, there you see, we actually have pretty good control authority. And a large part of, you know, the space shuttle's ability to fly. And you notice I'm doing a complete loop here to actually kill some velocity. A large part of the space shuttle's ability to fly is down to its lifting body characteristics, which are modelled by Ferrum. These may not be possible with the regular Kerbal aerodynamics. And after that speed-killing manoeuvre, I think we are pretty well aligned for a final approach. Completely unpowered, we do have a bit of fuel if we need it, but I think I can make it onto the runway without it. Yes, using nothing more than the kinetic energy bequeathed to me by my descent from orbit. Uh, it's obviously just a, well, it's basically just a case of managing kinetic and potential energy. And Jebediah is maybe coming in a little low. And I say Jebediah merely to hide the fact that, oh dear, that I am a terrible pilot. I really am. I really am. And I don't want to hit that light. Okay, I didn't hit that light. Excellent. Oh, uh, we're crashing. Oh, okay, we didn't crash, actually. Oh, look, we, we're down safely, even though we had... Uh, extra mass and doors that would not close properly because of that hinge. We shall have to investigate. Well, so much for investigating. Jebediah and Bill are up again in another shuttle launch. This is going to contain a strut with a bunch of docking adapters that will be able to help us build a larger and more complex spacecraft. Instead of just building the whole thing on a chain as I've done so far, I really probably should kind of build it sideways a little so that it doesn't look completely like a, a space train. Uh, you know, get on the space train, join hands, get on the space train to Duna. Do not follow, I don't know, we're... we're Okay, well, we're going to fly this uh, up there. We're going to get it docked. Jebediah and Bill are clearly the guys for the mission again after their epic flight of the their of their spacecraft with a open cargo bay door. This one is designed so that even if the hinge fails, it, they will still be able to close the cargo bay door. But uh, they uh, otherwise, they're going to do pretty well, I guess. Okay, so we're almost at the point where we have to ditch these uh, spacecraft, ditch the ditch the tanks, just get ourselves leveled out so that things look the part. And there we go. Off you go. You are free to return to the planet because you're on a suborbital trajectory. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Why did I leave you on a suborbital trajectory? It's because I'm a sadist and I want to let you fall back and burn in the fires of re-entry. You are witches, I tell you. You are going to burn. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, opening the cargo bay doors, we have the, the whole truss structure there with docking ports. Okay, 3.5 kilometers out, moving at 16 meters per second. It will still, uh, we still have a large window before we actually arrive. This is a rather sedate approach when you uh, do it using the, do it using the maneuver nodes. It actually leads to a nice slow approach to the target, which is a good thing. It means there's no chaotic, you know, last minute suicide burns as you fly past the target. No carefully planned rendezvous or the gentleman's way of getting his encounters. Wow, that sounds a little bit pervy, doesn't it? Yes, these encounters in orbit are a well-planned and discreet affair for these gentlemen. Oh, no, wait, that sounds like Bill and Jeb are gay, and they're not. Obviously not. Even though there are only Kerbal dudes in the game so far, they're not gay. Not that there would be a problem with that. I mean, you know, they've spent months and months in the capsule together, so, you know, I, it, it's up to them to do what they like, but I... I think they're just, you know, great Kerbal heroes and uh, they can be whatever they want to be and uh, you can imagine them whatever way you would like them to. Please do not turn this into fan fiction. Oh god, now I'm thinking of Rule 34. Oh no! Anyway, uh, yeah, as I get distracted and said stupid stuff, uh, I float past the target, but that's okay, we're moving relatively slowly, it's not too much worry. And where are we? We're about 120 meters out. So just null out that velocity and head back in so that we can uh, have our encounter dock. Uh, oh god, we're going to be docking in orbit. Seriously, that's not a good idea. Yeah, oh look, from this angle the spacecraft kind of reminds me of the Event Horizon, which if you remember was a... It, 
it was kind of crucifix shaped in the movie, partly to imply, you know, it was of you know, religious significance. After all, in the Event Horizon, the ship, the titular ship, uh, I mean, the ship of the title. Uh, no, it's not what you mean if your vocabulary is weak. The ship of the title has literally been to hell and back. Uh, so let's fold out our docking proposkis, uh, our docking adapter thingy here. We are ready to dock with our spacecraft in orbit. No, no, I mean, just like we're going to connect, right? It's not that kind of docking. Oh, God, I'm digging myself in a hole here. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Seriously, old me was just rambling and kept on saying things and realizing that they all had weird uh, euphemisms. I mean, truthfully, if you study language, uh, roughly 80% of language has a, is some sort of euphemism for a sexual act. Seriously, it's very hard to find anything which isn't a euphemism of sorts. And uh, yeah, so we could run into a problem here. You see, what I wanted to do as we're coming in here, is I wanted to have this thing out of, you know, more or less at 90 degrees to the, the plane of those engines so that they would pass above and below it. And then I realized, oh dear, those uh, radiator fins are exactly where this thing would be. And if I try to connect with it, I will end up, uh, I will have a lot of trouble connecting these things because the nose of the space shuttle sticks forward and will more or less run into those radiator fins if I connect it in the orientation that I intended. You know, I think I really should have designed this, like, instead of just launching things bit by bit. But honestly, the design criteria keep changing because I went back and forth on whether I was going to support 0.23 immediately or, or what. Okay, so that's the orientation we're going to use in theory, but uh, I pretty much know for a fact that I'm going to knock one of those radiators off if... Uh, if it's deployed while active. I can't switch to that and close it because there's no probe body on the Duna Drive system right now. Um, it's maybe, maybe one of the, the pilots can get out, right? Because isn't it possible to, like, deploy solar panels? Oh, look at that. Looks very nice from this angle. Yeah, that's totally going to crash into it and break things. Not what I want to have happen. Um... So yeah, let's try EVAing Jebediah, because of course, if he can't do it, no one can. Jebediah, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one will. Okay, that's not going to work. Uh, come on, fly over there. Oh, I love, I love this. Zipping between spacecraft that are sitting, you know, just meters from each other while traveling at two kilometers per second. So beautiful. Uh, going to get... Well, yes... I'm confusing my buttons again, and I almost crashed into the solar panels. Just checking the solar panels. You know, Jeb, Jebediah is obviously being very careful to pretend that he deliberately meant to do that. And uh, don't knock this, because I think these things are really fragile. Okay, getting close. I want to get totally in close. Wait a second. Why is why do I still have a docking alignment indicator, even although I'm in spacesuit form, and no damage? I can't do anything here. I guess I could repair them if I break them. Maybe I should just break them and repair them. Oh, or maybe that's just a really bad plan. Or maybe I should enjoy just stretching my legs for once on this spacecraft. Okay, there is... Let's head back. We're, we'll come up with some plan to do this. I either we'll break it or we'll do some, you know, orientation reassignment or something. I don't know... It's a question of what the best thing to do is. I think if we had more docking ports on this truss, it would actually make things easier. Look at us. So we're going to go in extra, extra careful. So from this angle, we can actually... The nose isn't going to touch anything. So if we just connect up, then we will have a functioning spacecraft, right? We'll be able to, we'll be able to connect up close up the radiators and then hopefully undock and redock in the orientation we originally intended. You see, that is problem solving. That's the mind of Jebediah and Gene and Bill and everybody else involved. I mean, truthfully, Jebediah probably wanted to just smash the space shuttle into the radiators, realizing that we had a spare. 
that, oh, that was rather beautiful that that actually happened just as the sun set, I have to say. Rather nice synchronicity there. Okay, close that. Retract radiator. Nope. Yeah, apparently you're not retracting. Okay, but you're going to retract. Okay, let's try this second one again. See if he needs more convincing. Retract, I tell you. Thank you. Now, now we're all set up again. I like the lighting on the cargo bay. It's all green and red because we're using the coloured uh, lights. So because the centre of mass is inside the spacecraft, as I rotate, the this uh, docking port will, of course, not rotate with me. Again, ah, that would have been an idea to actually include one of those washers that lets docking ports rotate. Here we go. So I'm going to have to rotate 90 degrees. And once that's rotated, I'm going to have to translate in the correct direction so that we line up our docking ports and everything again. At least we're mostly pointed the right direction because if we weren't pointed the right direction, that would be more translation and mucking around that we would have to deal with. There we go. Jebediah knows what he's doing. So does Bill. But, you know, Bill won't let... Bill will, will only let Jebediah fly because if things go wrong, he likes to blame the other people. That's Bill's whole thing. He is always covering his own butt, so that's why he's always got that frown on his face. Not because he doesn't like frying, flying, because uh, he realises that he might get blamed if something goes wrong, and that's just not his way. Okay, gently slide forwards until we get these two spacecraft unified in orbit once more. This has been quite an epic mission just to add this really small part. But I really wanted to do it because, honestly, there's not many parts that this can actually add. Most of the other parts are going to be so big that they have to be delivered by rocket. I just hope I have enough fuel in this spacecraft after I've added all this stuff. We're going to have, like, a, a base, which is going to include a habitation module, a service module, and a lab. And I think I might need to introduce Kerbal Attachment System. I think I can use KAS to connect two spacecraft on the surface and then reset experiments and stuff according to the mobile lab. I'm not 100% sure. If that's possible, then I will include it. Otherwise, I will need to construct some sort of horrific docking mechanism which will work between rovers. I hate constructing docking mechanisms that work with rovers. Okay, we have contact. And we have no actual docking. Uh, that's great. Come on, um... Just let the force straighten you out. Use the force, port. No, nope. no. Nope. Clearly, this one has not does not have the affinity for the target port. Uh, I don't know what to do here. I guess I'm just gonna let this happen very slowly. Come on, don't go anywhere. Just turn very carefully. Turn. Oh yeah, of course. If I turn off my SAS, then I will straighten out. Aha! SAS was holding me, not holding me not straight. And there we have it! We have the part of the spacecraft built. We still don't have any probes on it, but hey, we actually have like a totally legit truss now loaded onto the spacecraft. And now, uh, yeah, I think we're ready. We can uh, take this thing home. But that sounds like a perfect thing to put in the next episode. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.